I stood facing the dark corner of the room. I could make out a figure within the shadows. Who's there? I asked. I felt a shiver run up my spine. Thump, thump. It stepped into the light. My breath caught in my throat. Thump. It moved closer. Dad, is that you? <laughs> She shivered under the covers that were pulled up tight to her chin, her eyes transfixed on the cross-shaped nightlight that illuminated her bedroom. The closet door was slightly ajar. She watched in silence as a shadowy figure pushed open the door. It slithered across the floor and tore the nightlight from the wall. Her breath quickened. She tried to scream. It slipped under her sheets and grabbed her by the ankles snatching her from her bed and vanishing into the closet. <laughs> Laura unlocked and entered her apartment. She switched on a lamp. What are you doing here? Laura turned to face a woman that looked hauntingly similar to herself. I live here, she stated. Not anymore. The woman got up and approached Laura. Sweetie, you are no longer you, and I am now you. Laura was taken aback. What does that mean? It means, my dear, that my associate here is going to kill you. The woman pointed towards a tall figure standing in the corner. Laura turned, grabbed the doorknob, flung open the door and ran out of the apartment building. Well, go get her, the woman demanded. The tall man headed out after her. Well, that didn't go well. <laughs> Sitting in my room, trying to wrap my mind around all that has happened. Maybe a drink and a shower will help to calm me. I wander over to the bar and pour myself a tall glass of scotch with a splash of soda. I drink and gaze out the window. I finish off my drink and shed my clothes. I turn on the shower and let the warm water wash over me. I lather up with the flower-scented soap provided by the hotel and rinse off. I turn off the water and step out of the shower. I grab the oversized bath towel, wrapping it around myself. I open the bathroom door, and I am no longer in the hotel. I look around. I am home. <laughs> Sandra and Tim get out of the car. They start to look around, when suddenly a cold wind rushes over them. A tall, slender, dark figure grabs Sandra by the throat and holds her against the car. Its long, bony fingers and claw-like nails dig into her flesh. Tim watches in horror as it speaks into her ear. Sandra is shaking with fear as it tells her of what is to come. Very soon, there will be death and destruction, it whispers in her ear. Sandra listens to the hideous figure as it tells her. There will be a large gathering of people. It will erupt from deep down taking everyone there with it. Sandra's eyes start to water. It tells her of a place she has never been and a date that is yet to come. It releases Sandra and vanishes. Sandra turns to face Tim with tears streaming down her cheeks. We have to go. We have to warn them. Sandra gets back into the car. Tim joins her in the car. Warn who and where are we going? So I'm not going to lie, I enjoy reading erotica. Seriously, who doesn't?
I especially enjoy the short experience stories. I came across this one particular story. It was titled The Yellow School Chair. It piqued my curiosity, so I clicked on it. The Yellow School Chair. From the moment I laid eyes on her, I wanted her. She was hot, short, curvy, and cute. I showed her the archive room. No one ever goes in there. It is a room full of bookshelves and boxes and clutter. I pulled out a yellow plastic school chair and placed it in the middle of the room. I asked her to have a seat. I walked around her, standing behind her. I ran my hands down her neck, rolling my thumb over the scar at the base of her neck. I stopped reading. I reached up and ran my fingers across the back of my neck. There is no way that this is one of my personal experiences that somebody else is writing about. I mean, it is a small world and all, but what are the chances? Vivian opened her eyes, realizing that she was on the ground. She pushed herself up into a sitting position. What the hell? She was sitting on damp leaves surrounded by trees. The wind gusted, sending a shiver through her. Vivian ran her hands along her bare arms and wondered where her sweater had gotten to. She stood up and the world spun. Forcing her to take a few steps quickly, she regained her balance and began to look around. Something caught her eye in the distance. As she stumbled towards it, she recognized the objects on the ground. Vivian picked up her phone and her sweater, pulling her arms through and buttoning up. Of course, no service. She found what seemed to be a path and headed out of the wooded area. She emerged from the woods onto a dirt road. Well, thank God. She walked along the road as she kept checking her phone for a sign of life. Twilight had begun and the sun was slipping beneath the horizon. All of a sudden, her phone chimed. Fifteen missed calls from Francine. What the? She scrolled through the contact list. Push call. Where the hell are you? Francine answered. I'm not quite sure. I think I'm somewhere off of Route 18. Well, I'll come find you. What happened? Vivian asked. I'm not sure. We'll discuss it when I get you, Francine said. Francine pulled up alongside Vivian. She opened the door and got in. Francine leaned across and gave her a hug. Are you okay? Francine asked. I think so, but how did I end up out here? You don't remember? Last thing I remember, we were going to the carnival, Vivian answered. Francine started to drive home towards Overland. We were at the carnival. We went to watch an act on the main stage. Ring any bells? Francine asked. Vaguely, it was a magician, a hypnotist. So what happened? You went on stage, he whispered something into your ear, and then you just, you just lost it. You picked up an arrow that had been left on stage from the last act, and you, you stabbed him in the neck. Francine took a deep breath and looked at Vivian. Vivian stared out the window. Then what happened? You ran off stage and disappeared, Francine said. How long? Three days. The sun had just dipped beneath the horizon as I gazed out at the ocean. We were on a family vacation of sorts. Dad had passed and Mom felt it necessary to go see the ocean. Standing with my toes in the cool sand, watching the waves roll by, my phone buzzed. I looked down at the caller ID. Dad. I took a deep breath and answered. Hello? Hey, sweetie. Dad? My eyes filled with tears as the sound of his voice. Yes, Meg, it's me. Just wanted to tell you that I love you and that it will all be okay. With tears streaming down my cheeks, I answered. I love you too. The phone goes silent. The sun has set. 
I close my eyes and listen to the waves slap against the shore.